Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint. I call it a walk in the rain. So we have a mother and child walking down a colorful path. So kind of a unique painting. The outer parts are done with like all black and white and then like all the inner parts is done with color. So kind of a unique interpretation of this, a mother and son walking in the rain, colorful path. Um, I did this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I'm going to go ahead and get started. So with the canvas going in a vertical setup, I'm going to first draw the horizon line. So we're going to set the painting up with our horizon line, which is the horizontal line that goes across the canvas. And then we're going to draw the path. So just setting up the basic composition so we can start filling in our areas of the painting. So the horizon line is not exactly center. It's about seven and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas. So measure that. And then our path is uh, starts at the bottom, maybe like a couple inches uh, from the corners of the canvas, but I left space on the bottom for some land and it doesn't go to a point. It just goes flat at the top. So we can always adjust this later if you don't like the look of the path, if you want it wider or thinner, depending on how we go with this painting. And next we're going to do the sky. So the sky in this is a very simple blended black and white combination that creates the illusion of rain. And so I have Mars black and titanium white loaded onto my palette. You don't need as much black as you do white. The black is very strong, so we just want maybe a little bit of black. So I'm gonna double load my brush. Notice how I loaded that in the water and only tapped it dry a little bit. I wanted to utilize that water to kind of thin down the paint. So we're doing up and down strokes and we're letting our black gently blend with the white, but not blend it all the way. So if we over blend, it's gonna end up just turning gray and a solid color. We wanna leave it kind of unblended. So black and white, streaky, just like uh, if the rain was falling and it's a gray sky way in the distance um, behind our trees. So just doing up and down strokes, everything is filled in above our horizon line. So if you go below your horizon line, that's okay. We can always redefine that later. This should be a thin layer of paint because we have a little bit of water that has thinned it down. So it shouldn't be a thin thick at all. And our strokes go pretty much all the way across. Um, there's a few strokes where maybe it doesn't go all the way across and um, you don't have to. So maybe there's like a streak of black right in the middle and it doesn't go all the way up. Um, it's kind of a medium gray color, medium to light gray. I just want to be careful not to use too much black because if we make our sky too dark, our trees aren't going to stand out because our trees are darker than the sky. So we want that to have enough contrast and just gently going across that really um, quick. Um, but again, trying not to over blend it. Next, we're going to do the bottom part of our painting. So we're going to do the, the ground area that's on the outside part of the path. So same thing, double load using the three quarter flat brush. And we're going to start at the bottom. These strokes, instead of going up and down, I'm doing kind of a expressive style stroke. So I'm kind of going crisscross in an X sort of direction. Letting our black and white blend, but not over blend. We're just trying to create a textured area of grass, shrubbery, whatever is kind of growing on the side of our paths. We don't have to be super detailed about it. We're just kind of focusing on filling in the area of the canvas, actually. Um, so I'm just doing the black and white. I'm going to vary this. So maybe there's some area like right here where it's darker. Um, if you want to create some depth, you'll want the uh, part where the horizon line is to have a little bit more white. So I'm grabbing a little bit more white up there. You can go above your horizon line a little bit just to kind of make an uneven sort of hilly area that kind of goes above that line that we drew. And also since we uh, covered 
below the horizon line with our vertical strokes earlier, we can kind of cover that up. So it's going to look choppy for now. We can go back in and detail it a little bit more if you don't like the look. Uh, really the focus is the tree and our figures walking down the path. So um, really the purpose here is just to kind of fill this area up. And I'm just going back in and kind of softening these strokes a little bit. So I started at the back and I'm just going back over that and just doing that blending, the wet and wet blending, just to soften those strokes a little bit because they're a little bit too choppy. And I'm just going down and kind of softening those strokes. So we have that area filled in and we can go in maybe add some darker little areas down here. And if you're working on a stretched canvas, you can paint the sides too as you go along. I don't always demonstrate painting the sides, but you can just take the colors on your palette and extend it on the side. Or you can wait till your painting's done and you can paint the sides like a solid color. Sometimes it looks good when it's just painted solid black or another solid color that would complement the painting. We are going to start painting the path and the path is going to have colors. So we're gonna grab three new colors on our palette. We have Ked Yellow Light, Light Pink, Light Blue Violet, and Titanium White. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab my three quarter flat brush. And I'm gonna paint my path white first. And this is gonna help uh, get us the color, it's gonna help blend our colors too. So just with the three quarter flat and the titanium white, uh, pretty generous layer. It's kind of thick, but not too thick, but it's definitely a little bit thicker than the sky. So I'm just loading that on the tip of my brush and I'm painting left and right strokes using just the tip of my brush. You may have to go out of the path limits like I am, I'm going over those lines, but I am able to go back and redefine the edges later in a, a next step. If that bothers you, you can stay inside the lines the best you can. But just to get good coverage here to make sure all that canvas on the path is covered, I am purposefully going outside the lines. And we could also decide maybe we want our path to be a little bit wider so we can use the white here to really define that path area. Once we have our path covered in white, we can start adding color to it. So without rinsing your brush, you're gonna grab one of the colors. I'm gonna start with the light pink, just on the tip of the brush. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing I was doing with the white, only I'm doing this with the color. So just left and right using the tip of the brush, and I'm not covering all the areas. I'm just gonna kind of do like, uh, random areas. So I grabbed yellow without rinsing the brush and I'm just going to kind of fill in left and right in some other random areas. Some of that yellow is overlapping the pink and that's okay. And I'm just going to kind of fill this up in sort of calico uh, formation here with all these different colors. Uh, when you when you do go to blue and if you don't rinse the brush it's going to turn kind of green or brownish and that's okay. Uh, if you want it to be more of the blue, you can rinse dry and then grab your blue. And you can just kind of do different combinations of these colors lightly. It should be blending with that white layer. So we added that white layer first. It should be showing up light and the color is being added and it should be look, looking like kind of a pastel -y sort of color because of the white. I'm gonna wipe my brush off here and grab the blue to get some more pure blue colors in there. Um, but just kind of the same thing using just the tip of the brush and just gently going back and forth left and right and just kind of changing the colors all throughout our path. Uh, later on we'll be able to really define where the shadow is of our uh, mom and son and then also some lights that are reflecting on the path from our, uh, our lights that we'll be painting in. But for now we're just filling in with random colors.
When you get to the back area of the path, uh, try to add a little bit extra white on your brush just to make that area a little bit brighter. It's further away so it would be a little, it would be brighter and lighter. And then I just took that white and kind of went down a little bit further with some white streaks. But we can go and detail our path later with more reflection lines if needed. We're going to go ahead and move on to a different brush here. I'm going to repaint the sides of my path to define the grass edges. Uh, if you don't find this necessary, you don't have to do that if you want to skip this step. But I'm going to use a smaller brush. This is that 3 8 inch angle brush. And I'm just going to use my black and white that's already on my palette. And I'm just going to do some textured strokes on the edges of my path. So kind of maybe overlapping a little bit, a little textured kind of curved strokes just to create that edging. And I'm going back into some of the middle parts and just creating some more texture in that area as well. And then if you want, you can even like do strokes that look like grass. You can use the tip of the brush and just create some vertical little strokes that are kind of going in different directions. And then I'm going to do the same thing over on the left side. So start at the bottom and do your edging wherever we kind of made our path go back into the grassy area. So we're just redefining the edge of that path and then going in and adding texture to the inner part of the grass area. Next, I'm going to do the trees. So with the trees, I used an eight round brush. Feel free to use a different brush that you feel comfortable with. Maybe you have a brush that is your favorite tree brush. You can use that. I like using this round brush because it has a thick and thin, it's got a very nice point to it, um, but the bristles are thick on the bottom so I can really uh, change my stroke just by pressing hard or thin. So. I'm going to start at the base of the tree and do kind of a wider trunk area at the base. And this is my tall tree, so this is the lower right part of the canvas. Adding bits of water into my black, that's really going to get your black to flow nicely. And I'm just painting upwards and it's going to branch out uh, before we go above our horizon line. So it's going to branch out into like a letter Y shape, letter Y formation. And then to get those thin strokes, I'm using the tip of the brush. So the thick strokes, I'm pressing down harder on the brush. Thin strokes, I'm kind of letting loose on the brush, uh, holding it lighter and using more of that tip to get that thinner. So you do thick and thin. Sometimes it might be easier to start thin and then go thick. So if you start at the edge of the branch thin and then you slowly press harder, that'll get your branch to get thicker at the base. But you're just going to form your tree and then we're going to do a second tree after that. So this second tree is the same technique only because the tree is a little bit further up the path, it's going to be smaller. So we're going to kind of pick a spot. We'll let this grow about right here. And again, start at the base, make it a little bit thicker at the base and then go up towards your horizon line. Um, we can add texture at the base if we wanted to later, like grass texture or shadow. So don't worry about that detail yet. And then we're going to go up and release the pressure of your brush to get that to go to a point. And this tree is not as high as our other tree. In fact, I'm going to go back with the other tree later. 
uh, to make those branches in that other tree a little bit higher. And we can have this branch go out. It doesn't have to look exactly like your first tree. You're going to have your branches go in a different direction if you want. Then I'm going to do a third tree, same thing, only this guy is a lot smaller and doesn't go as high as our other tree. Um, if you find this eight round is a little bit too big for that tree, you can always switch to a smaller round brush. And then like I said earlier, I'm going to make this tree go up almost to the top of the canvas. This is that first tree. So I'm just making those branches go a little bit higher. It's gonna allow us to create some more fun leaves on these trees, the more branches that we have up high. So on the left side of our canvas, we only have one tree. If you wanted more than one, like if you want the it to be symmetrical, trees going across both sides of the path, you can. I decided to do lamp posts on the left side of the path. So same thing, this tree starts in the middle area of the grassy outer path area. Um, and our tree curves towards the right to almost go over the path a little bit. So I'm making these branches kind of sway to the right. And there's not going to be any tree or leaves above that. I can add some fun rain texture in that sky area a little bit later. So I'm just kind of making those branches kind of curve down a little bit and a little bit more curvature on these branches. You can adjust the trees differently if you want your tree to have like a different style to it or whatever style that you are used to painting trees, you can do it that way. Just add a few more branches in there. Next, we're going to do the leaves, and the leaves are done with our 3 8 inch angle brush. You can also do this with a smaller flat brush. If you don't like the, the angle brush, just get like a bright brush and use that. So double load in your black and your white, and I'm going to start in the back actually and work my way forward because if you think of the terms of layers, the front tree would be overlapping our back tree. So we're going to start in the back. And we want to do strokes that, it's got to stand out against the sky. So we want to do strokes that are going kind of an angled direction uh, with, uh, give it enough contrast from the sky. So I'm using a, a different like combination of black and white. Some of my strokes are a little bit more black, some are a little bit more white. You may have strokes that look just like the same shade of gray in the sky and it's just going to completely blend in and that's okay. We just want to create enough contrast to where those leaves do stand out and also because it's a different texture than that, um, the texture, the different texture creates the contrast as well. So I'm just flip-flopping my brush, creating short angular strokes, working my way back to the front on our branches, and that's going to create some impressionistic abstract leaves. We are not looking for realism at all. We can always go back in and add more leaves if necessary. I want to go ahead and take the time to highlight some of these trees as well. So without rinsing my brush, I'm using the 3 8 inch angle brush to just lightly, very, very lightly kind of highlight the left side of all the trees. There would be light shining that would be hitting the left side, so we want to just very lightly, kind of a curvy, very light line, almost dry brush style. So we see a lot of that black still showing. So just very gently highlight the left part of some of our branches. You don't have to do that to all the branches. The light wouldn't be hitting all the branches. So just very lightly. Um, if you wanted to go back in and add more black because uh, maybe it was too light, you can always do that. And then we can also do the shadow. So with the shadow, it's just black. 
So load your brush in the black, just the tip of the brush, and just very loosely do some left and right strokes. You remember the ground is wet, so it would be kind of a, a wet sort of reflection shadow, and it's just below, vertically below each of our tree trunks. And we can do it under this guy too. We still gotta add leaves to that one. And just left and right strokes, kind of down, very loosely. This is a very loose style of painting. And then we can do a few little um, diagonal lines of grass if we wanted to. To the light on this side of the tree. So this one I did the light, the highlight on the right side. So just very loosely adding the white to the right side of the branches, but you don't have to do that to all the branches. So just the main branches. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the leaves on this tree. So same thing, left and right, just kind of flip-flopping my brush very expressively. Again, this is a very loose style painting. There's more emotion to this impressionistic style than there is realism. So if you just kind of not think too hard and just relax, that is kind of the point of this style. Um, didn't do any leaves higher than that. I did mention I was going to leave the sky kind of blank in the upper left area so that I, I could paint some rain texture in that area. A few more leaves kind of in the middle area above the path. Our path just kind of disappears there at the horizon line so I can maybe add a few little strokes in there, some grass or shrubbery way back there. Um, if you think that it's a, it's a rain painting, so in the distance it kind of gets ambiguous and um, you don't see very many details way in the distance. So next, we are, you want to make sure your paintings dry before doing this step, um, but I'm going to do the lampposts and I'm going to draw my lamppost with a chalk pencil first. If you feel confident and you want to just paint your lamppost in, you can do that. I'm going to use this chalk pencil. And so I started by drawing the base of the lamp. So it's kind of like a cylinder shape. So it's curved on the bottom and the top of that shape. And this is the lamppost it's in the lower left part there's going to be three lamp posts and they're all each going to get gradually smaller so there's the base and then for our vertical beam you can use a ruler to if you want to make your beam verticals so you can line it up to the side of your canvas or use a t-square ruler if you want that to be like perfectly perpendicular um, to get your straight line in there and then we can do, you can look up different styles of lampposts too if you don't want to do this style. Or if you want to simplify it and just do circle lamps, that can, you can do that as well. But I did kind of a half circle for the base. And then I did three diagonal lines for the light fixture piece. And then this, the top part of those three diagonal lines I'm going to do a curve, so that curve goes downwards. And then a second part of that curve. And then the top part is another curve, kind of a half circle curve. And there's a little notch at the top, like a little circle at the top. Okay, so there's our first lamp post. And we can go ahead and draw our second one in too. I'm gonna make the, the base of this one a little bit, extend that down a little bit further so it's more towards the bottom of our canvas. And it also makes this lamppost look like it's a little bit higher. I'm just thinking in terms of the height of our figures um, are going to not be taller than our closest lamppost. So we want to, I just wanted to make that look, that lamppost look a little bit bigger. And then, so same thing for our second lamppost. So start where you want your base to be. So it's, it's, again, the, the cylinder, 3D cylinder shape. And then you do your vertical piece. And then you do the same kind of thing. So half circle for the base of the light fixture, three diagonal lines, and then our top piece, which is kind of a curvy shape. 
or half circle at the very, very top of the little notch. Um, it's smaller than our first one. And then there's going to be a third lamppost, but that one I am not going to draw in because it's small. And also our white chalk pencil is not really going to show up in that area. If you wanted to, you can get like a regular drawing pencil, a darker pencil, and you can draw that in. But we're just going to paint that guy in on our own without drawing it later on. So next we're going to paint our lampposts in and I'll be using the number four round brush for this. Uh, there's a couple different ways we could do the lamppost. We can paint the light first and then the black part or we can paint the black part first and then the yellow light part. So I'm actually going to demonstrate this by painting the light first. And I'm going to load my palette with some titanium white. Freshen your CAD yellow light if you need to. So if it's dried up by now you can freshen that. I'm going to mix equal parts white and yellow together and that's going to create a bright yellow color. I'm just going to go ahead and paint the inside of my lamp posts. So literally that shape that we drew, that's all painted yellow. Same thing with this little guy and we won't worry about our third lamp post just yet. And then after you paint that, you wanna grab your white and just make like a little circle of white right in the center part of your yellow. So that'll make that inner part brighter like where the light bulb is and we're going to go ahead and rinse and dry and we're going to do the black post part next so load your brush in the black if you want you can water the black down just slightly that'll help with the flow of our area that we're painting in you just don't want it to be too watery because we don't want it to pool or drip down the canvas and we're going to start at the base so painting that cylinder shape so I just outline it and then I paint the shape in again if you really just think loosely we're not trying to make this look realistic um, in a rainy day painting things would be kind of skewed and look more abstract because of the rain uh, the water kind of makes things look that way. So if you think in terms of that way, it definitely doesn't have to look perfect. And then, so I did the base part and then uh, for the vertical part, you just need a steady hand for that. And um, it, if it helps, you can use the ruler to help you guide. But since we drew that with the chalk line, I'm just going back over my chalk line. I'm gonna make that line a little bit thicker as well. And then do your, light fixture piece so that's a, a semicircle at the bottom grabbed a little bit of white right there because I'm just gonna make that a little bit thicker and that white kind of gives that pole a little bit of a color variation and also a little bit of white on the base of our post I know that got cut off right there but I just did two strokes on like the right part of the uh, cylinder part and just not let it blend all the way give a little bit of highlight and then that the light fixture piece we got two diagonal lines I'm not touching the center line there's there's a center line that overlaps our light but because that yellow is not dry I didn't do that yet grabbed a little bit of white right there and just kind of went over my black a few times and that white is just kind of blending itself on the canvas gives it some color variation variation so it's not completely black and then just that little notch at the top and there's our first little lamp post and I'll go ahead and paint the second lamp post using the same technique starting at the base occasionally adding bits of white in there for highlight and loosening the paint a little bit with the water.
add one more coat to the a pull of this one make that a little bit darker and then do a little bit of shadow below our bases so same th the same thing that we did with the trees but do the little loose strokes below the lampposts and we'll make this one go down a little bit further and we could even extend that on the sidewalk if you wanted to but I'll extend the light reflection on the sidewalk uh, in a later step. Did the little notch at the top of that one. And then we can go ahead and do our third lamppost. So I'm going to rinse and start with the yellow light on our little lamppost that's way in the distance. So this light is going to be about right here. So do like a little trapezoid shape. And then we're going to rinse dry, grab our black. So this one's very loose and uh, it's in the distance. The rain would be kind of skewing it a little bit. So we don't have to worry about making this perfect. And so we're going to do the light fixture piece. So two diagonal lines and then two horizontal lines and the little curve at the top. So the little piece below it and just with this one I found it easier to start at the top and then do the base and the pole but if you wanted to do it opposite and start at the base and then do the pole and then the light could have done it that way. Do our line and then our little base. Then we could highlight a little bit, a little pop of white on the base and the pole. And at the top piece. Then if your inner lighter light part is dry or mostly dry, you can do your diagonal line. So there's another line on this light fixture that goes down the middle. It doesn't have to be center. It could be a little bit diagonal too, but it's another part of that light fixture piece. And that one isn't dry, but I'm just going to go over it anyway. I did some glowing light on the outer part of the lamps and I did that dry brush style. So if you load your brush in yellow and white, then wipe it off and do like curved strokes on the outer part of the lamp. That's going to create that kind of glowing effect. Again, all you do is you load it in the paint, you dry it with your towel. And when you dry it, that's just making it so there's not a lot of paint on your brush so that you can do the dry brush style. And just do a few st curved strokes on the outer parts. It shouldn't be bright or opaque or solid. Uh, it should be very blurry, but enough to look like the light is glowing. And so same thing with this lamp and you can do it with your little lamp in the distance. Then if you want to make it look like this lamp is um, casting like a glowing reflection on our path, you can just take your yellow and white and do little strokes, little horizontal strokes going down your path and that'll create the illusion of the reflection. You can go back in with some more titanium white to make it brighter. That's going to create that bright glow that our lamps could be casting on our sidewalk, that reflection. And then you can kind of go all throughout your path and create some more reflection lines with your white. I switched to the eight round brush that because that one has a better tip and I can create some thinner lines. So this is the eight round brush. Before I was using that four round brush, this is the eight round and just doing very loose horizontal white lines kind of all throughout the path. Gives the illusion of water on our path.
Next, we can create some rain in our sky in the upper left. And to do that, I used the eight round and the white. And I did vertical, very loose, very, very thin vertical strokes to define uh, the rain. So we can see some um, actual rain drops, rain uh, vertical lines <laughs> falling from the sky. And I did that in that area. So just very loosely, the vertical lines do not have to go all the way from the top to the bottom. It, they can uh, be kind of staggered and kind of um, some breaks in between. And then we can add as many as we want. We don't want it to look too busy in there, but we can even have some of it overlap some of our leaves. I'm going to do a few more subtle details in here before I draw my people, but I just did a few more little horizontal water reflection strokes below the lampposts. I highlighted the trees just a bit, just adding that pop of extra white in there where that bright light would be hitting. This is optional, you don't have to do these little details. And then a few little strokes of like grass texture kind of on the sides of the path. So with the black, you can use the black and the white, you can make some gray strokes. So just a few little grass marks kind of along the path. We'll be doing the drawing of the mother and the son next. So you'll just need a regular drawing pencil for this. And we're going to start by doing the mother figure first. We're gonna start with the legs of the mom and we're about an inch to two inches from the bottom of the canvas. And I'm going to draw a narrow triangle shape for her legs, horizontal line, above that for her skirt. So the legs, triangle, horizontal line above that for her skirt. And we're gonna do two diagonal lines going up. You wanna think about the size of this. So she shouldn't be taller than our the lamp post in the front because she's a little bit in front of that lamp post, but she shouldn't be taller than that. And so just uh, two kind of slanted lines. And then the umbrella is right above there. So just do the scalloped pointy uh, curved lines. Um, the umbrella is a, uh, goes off the path a little bit to the left and then it goes up and curves up about an inch. So you wanna sketch pretty lightly and then kind of go over your sketch to make it darker. So if I measured her from the bottom point of her legs to the top of the umbrella, that's about four inches. And if I measured from the bottom of the canvas to the bottom tip of her legs, that's about an inch and a half. So that gives you kind of an estimate on my size. Your sizing can be different if you want it to be a little bit larger or smaller, depending on the placement of the where you have them on the path, that's okay. And then we're gonna do the little boy next, or it could be a little girl. And I started with the umbrella shape, so I drew same kind of umbrella shape, but smaller. I'm gonna start by doing the curve part on the top of the umbrella, and then the scallop lines below it, the bottom part. And then two diagonal lines down for the coat. These lines go to about where the uh, bottom line of her skirt is. So that's the length of that. And then I did the boots, the little boot shape and our little triangular leg. This is gonna look very sketchy until we paint it in and we could always adjust it as we paint. We can do his little arm. And the mom is holding the hand, his hand. So we can do a little arm going down. They're holding hands. 
And then I did another narrow triangle next to the first one to make it look like she's got two legs. And I adjusted the boot here. I made the boot a little bit too big, so I raised our boot here and made it just a tad bit smaller. And I also made it look like he's got two boots. The bottom of the coat is angled down just a little bit. And that's it for the drawing portion. We're going to go ahead and paint this in. And so I'm going to start with the mom and her umbrella. And she's got a yellow umbrella. Feel free to change the colors of this if you wanted her to have a red umbrella or a multicolor umbrella. So we're going to double load our yellow into the... Um, Number four round brush, so double load it in yellow and white. The white is going to allow the yellow to have coverage. Um, yellow tends to be a see-through color, so adding white to it will make it look light and pastel-like, but also give it coverage. If you don't like the look of the pastel yellow, you can always paint the umbrella white first, wait for that to dry, and then add more of a warm yellow to it if that's what you prefer. But basically, all I'm doing is painting in the shape. So I'm just outlining the shape and painted it in solid with the yellow. Then without rinsing the brush, grab a little bit of white on the tip of your brush and just do a few random strokes in there without blending it all the way together. That's going to start creating that highlight on the umbrella. There's not much extra we can do because that yellow is really wet and we really can't alter that color much. But just a few little strokes of white will give it that pop of highlight and we'll do some more highlighting later to this. I'm extending this umbrella up just a little bit higher, kind of defining that top part a little bit more. And then I'm going to load my palette with Cad Red Medium Hue. There is some red in this umbrella, kind of on the outline of it. Wipe the brush off and load just the tip of it in the red. I'm just going to loosely outline the bottom edges of the umbrella with the red and do some of those lines that go kind of curved to the top point of the umbrella. So just quick strokes really like in one stroke I'm stroking it and kind of releasing the brush and not going back and over blending it. Then I'm going to rinse dry and use the light blue violet. So I'm going to do her coat with the light blue violet. A little bit of water in there to get that paint going. I could have refreshed that. It got dried a little bit from, the last time we used that color was with the path. So I'm gonna paint the top part of her coat with that light blue color and I'm just stroking down, filling in that shape and then stroking in a diagonal direction to form that bottom shape and just filling that in solid. Then on my palette I'm going to mix white with a light blue violet to get a lighter version of that color and I'm going to be using that light light blue violet to do some highlighting and kind of outlining. So I started by doing the buckle part so that little horizontal piece and then a little stroke on the left part and some diagonal strokes on the left part of the bottom part of the coat slash skirt. Then rinse and dry and we're going to make a shade of that blue by like mixing a teeny tiny bit of black with the light blue violet. That's going to make a dark version of that. It's going to look like a gray actually. And with that gray color we just made, I'm just going to do the same thing like what I did with, with the white, but it's on the right side of it. So kind of shadowing, dark outlining just on the edge. Then we're going to paint the legs, so load 
the black right there on the tip of the brush and paint those narrow triangular pieces very loosely does not have to be like exact so that it's like a little pointed triangle and then there's another leg in front we don't see her feet and we're gonna do we're gonna extend that down a little bit more and then we can do the shadow part. So just very loosely, just like what we did with the trees and the lamppost, just very loose horizontal lines. If it helps, you can thin down that black paint a bit, kind of easier to work with when you thin it down just a bit. You can also add blue on the very bottom of that reflection. So I just quickly rinsed dry. That got cut off there just a bit, but you'll see what I did. I just took that reflection down to the bottom of the canvas with that blue color and so that's reflecting on the path as well. Then I grabbed my light blue violet again and she's got her left arm over here. We just see like the upper part, the elbow part that kind of bends and I'm not going to do her other arm, the one that's holding on, the right arm that's holding on to the child's hand um, until we get the child painted in so I have the placement of him right before I do the arm. And then I'm going to move on and do the same um, technique with umbrella with the kid only I'm using red so with the red I'm just going to start by outlining the shape of the umbrella and then painting that in solid with the red and then for the other color in here we can load the tip of our brush in white so wipe off the brush load the tip of it in the white and do your lines with the white. So these are just quick one stroke lines. I'm not over blending it. If I just kept painting it, it would blend all the way in. I want it to show up. And then for the shadowy part of our umbrella, we can take the black and we can loosely outline the bottom part of our umbrella. And then on the right side, we can loosely outline that. We just don't want to outline everything, the entire shape. We just, I like to outline some of the shape and not all of it, just so it doesn't look like a coloring book. And then we're gonna move along to his yellow coat. So rinse dry, grab your yellow. So kind of the same thing, you wanna grab a little bit of white with the yellow to make sure that you have good coverage because the yellow tends to be a see-through color. So grabbing some white on that as well. And you don't have to mix it together evenly. I kind of like how that yellow and white mix on the canvas together. So I did the raincoat and his arm goes down at like a 90 degree angle and then goes back up. And the bottom of the coat is a little bit diagonal. And then we can do the rain boots, same color. Again, feel free to change these colors if you want. Just um, kind of used my hand to make sure that the bottom of his boots were lined up with the bottom of her legs. So they're at the same level and <laughs> he's not like way down the canvas or way up the canvas where his boots are. And um, he's got two boots, so I did the back one. Um, it may not look like that yet, but we're going to do a little bit of outlining to get this to pop better um, with the black. So loading just a teeny bit of black on your brush, you can do the legs. So we have the front leg, a little bit of that back leg. Again, this is very loose, very sketchy. I'm not thinking too hard about making this look realistic. And then I'm loosely outlining the bottom part of the coat that goes at an angle, the right kind of vertical line where the back is, a little bit of the bottom of the arm as well, did uh, some extra on the bottom of the umbrella. And then those boots, I just loosely outlined the boots where I wanted that to show so it, we can see the shape of his boot now. And then the bottom of the arm. Then I can rinse dry and I can do the reflection under his boots. So grabbing that yellow 
and doing the reflection of the yellow, I can grab black and do reflection of that and add yellow. I can even add red reflection in there as well at the very bottom of the canvas because of his red umbrella. Again, very loose little horizontal strokes. Not a lot of paint on the brush. I load it just on the tip of the brush, very thin. Then I can do the mother's arm, loading that light blue violet back on my palette and just doing like a thin triangular piece attached to the child's arm. We don't see the hand or anything. The umbrella is pretty much covering that. And then I can go back and shadow that with the black and highlight it with the white. Going back over that umbrella piece right there at the corner. The rest of this painting is pretty much going to be touch-ups. I want to add a little bit more color in my path. Now that I have everything kind of situated with the path, I can go back in and do uh, maybe a second coat here and there of the color. So this is the pink, so maybe some more pink in the path. And I can go in with more white as needed if I wanted some more white reflection or even some more light reflecting on the path. Another touch up I did was add a teeny bit of black to the tip of my brush. I did a little bit of black on her umbrella, not too much, but just a few little lines to help it pop a little bit better. So over here on the right, um, one of the curves on the bottom and a few of the lines in the middle, but not too much. The red does a pretty good job, but I just added a few little strokes of black in there. And then I did a little bit more highlight on the left part of the umbrella and some of the left parts of her coat on his coat as well. Another touch up I did was add more leaves. So I just grabbed my angle brush again and went back in there and did a few more leaves with the white. Made some brighter pieces, just kind of here and there. And if you feel like you want some brighter pieces or some darker pieces, you can do that. I still left the upper left part of the sky blank for our raindrops. And then I went in with the white, a few little grass texture strokes as well. I also painted some more rain kind of around our lamp posts. So with the eight round and the, the white, I just did some very, very thin vertical lines around our lamp post because there's light in that area. So we would be seeing some of the raindrops falling next to those lamp posts. We can even do it by the trees as well. And then the final touch up that I recommend is drying, uh, drying your figures and then erasing any pencil marks that might still be showing. Same with the lamppost, erasing any chalk lines or pencil marks. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint a walk in the rain on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.